Good morning for the second time today, Facebook. Um, I'm back now um, with a full length half a class, so uh, that's 90 minute class, including pranayama, breathing practice, asana practice, and meditation and meditation. So it's going to be an improver level class, um, but if you're a yoga beginner, then feel free to just join in and do what you can. Just remember to be mindful of your body and your limits and don't push yourself too hard. That goes for everybody taking part. Okay, so the focus of the class this morning is lower body stretch and strengthen so we're going to be working mainly on the on the lower body hey shaza good to see you name pop up um okay yeah so i'm going to come over to my mat if you don't have a mat then you can improvise uh, maybe use a uh, area of carpeted floor or a rug or a towel. Just something to protect you from from uh, having uh, from cold tiled floors or whatever. Okay, so this is the half the session, so there will be rest poses uh, throughout the class. It will be a slightly slower paced class but we're still going to uh, really stretch and strengthen the lower body this morning. So we're gonna start off as always by sitting comfortably, either on the floor or on a cushion, up to you. If you want to sit cross-legged, sit cross-legged. If you want to sit with your legs straight out in front of you, then do so. Do try to sit with a uh, straight back, so your shoulders back, your chest forward, and we're going to begin by closing our eyes and just taking some time to notice our breath, our natural breath. So at this stage, don't try to change your breathing pattern, just notice your breath. So just notice how you're feeling this morning, your emotions, your state of mind. Do so in a non-judgmental way. Just notice, don't judge. Okay, I'm going to open the session by chanting the Om sound three times, followed by our opening mantra, Sahana Bhavatu, and ending with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. So feel free to join in uh, where you can. So starting with the Om sound.
straight back. Make sure that you are comfortable. So shift yourself around a little bit if you need to. Getting yourself comfortable to sit and practice pranayama. Breathing practice. We're going to breathe in a yogic way, in and out through our nose, inhaling as deeply as we can, exhaling as completely as we can. space in your chest for your lungs to fully expand. As you exhale, engage your stomach muscles, draw your belly button as close as you can towards your spine. Let your chest contract. Try to breathe in an ujjayi way, so constricting the back of your throat as you inhale and exhale through your nose, creating friction, creating that hissing sound, the sound of the ocean. Keep your body and your mind relaxed. Try to focus all of your attention on your breath. to match the length of your inhalation and your exhalation to the length of the words. If I pause in between and say retain, hold your breath. Try to keep to the pattern as much as you can. If you come out of the pattern, don't worry about it. Keep relaxed and join back in where you can.
Stay relaxed, bones tense up. And when you're ready, return to normal breath, your natural breath. going to come up to a standing position. Now we're going to practice, first of all, we're going to have a uh, all over stretch and then we're going to practice sun salutations and then we'll move on to our main asana practice. So first of all, let's just stretch our necks. First of all, exhaling, we're looking down to the floor. Inhaling, looking up to the ceiling. Exhaling down. Inhale up. Exhale down. And in. Exhale, return to neutral position, looking forwards. Now we're going to turn our head from side to side. Inhale, turn your head to the right. Look over your right shoulder. Inhale to the centre. Exhale to the left. Inhale, centre. Exhale, right. Notice any areas of stiffness, any differences between the sides of your body. Exhale left. Inhale front. Once more to each side. Exhale right. Inhale front. Exhale left. Inhale front. Okay, now tilting from side to side, exhale, tilt your head to the right, bringing your right ear down towards your right shoulder, keeping your shoulder down, inhale centre, exhale left, inhale centre, exhale right, inhale centre, Exhale, left. Inhale, once more to each side. Exhale, right. Inhale, exhale, left. Inhale. 
held back to the center. Now a couple of full head rolls, neck rolls. So first of all, looking down to the floor, rolling your head slowly in a controlled way all the way around. So starting by bringing your right ear towards your right shoulder, up to look at the ceiling, left ear to left, shoulder and back down to the floor. When we go back the other way, slowly and once more in each direction. Fabulous. Now let's stretch our shoulders, arm circles. So reaching up, reaching back, reaching forwards, trying to reach out as much as you can in each direction. So doing it slowly, trying to coordinate movement with breath, inhaling up, exhaling down. And back the other way. Good. Okay, let's give your arms a little bit of a swing. A couple of helicopters. Now bringing your feet slightly further apart. Toes slightly pointing out, hands on your hips, hip rotations, keep those legs straight, try to make the circles you're making with your hips as big as possible, really stretching the muscles around your hip joint. And back the other way. Now bringing your feet back together. I'm just going to face to the side so you can see what I'm doing. Standing with your feet about hip distance apart. Bend forwards, place your hands on your knees. So I'm looking forward, so I've got a straight back, a flat back. Knee rotations. As we bend our knees and bring our knees forwards, we're going to try to come up onto our tiptoes. And then as we straighten our legs, bring our knees back, we come back onto our forward foot. So this is helping challenge our balance a little bit here at the beginning as well. And back the other way. Standing back up again, let's just uh, practice coming up onto our tiptoes and back down again. So again, feet about hip distance apart, parallel with each other. Inhale, come up onto your tiptoes, trying to come up as high as you can, trying to stay as steady as you can, and exhale back down. Lift your toes up from the floor, leaving the rest of your foot on the floor. 
Inhale, come up. Exhale, back down, lift your toes. Inhale, come up and hold. Try to come as high as you can, be as steady as you can. Really engage your core muscles to keep you steady. And exhale back down, lift your toes. Fabulous, okay. So now we've had a bit of a stretch. We're now going to practice sun salutations, hatha sun salutations. So I will talk you through each step. Coming to stand at the top of your mat if you have one. If you don't have a mat, then just make sure you've got enough space behind you for the length of your body. Feet hip distance apart in mountain pose. First of all, inhale, exhale, palms together. Push the heels of your hands down so we're getting a good stretch in the wrist. Inhale, reach up, look up. Slight back bend, exhale, fold forwards, bending your knees if you need to. Remember, this is the morning, you're probably going to be a little bit stiff. As we go through the sun salutations, you should find that your muscles are starting to loosen off a little bit. Inhale, step your right foot back, knee down, foot down. Look up, low lunge. Hold your breath. Now bring your left foot back to plank position. Exhale, knees down, chest down, chin down. Ashtanga asana, eight points on the floor. Eight points are our toes, our knees, our hands, our chin and our chest. Now we're going to inhale, slide our chest forwards through our hands into Cobra. Remember, keep your elbows tucked in close to your body. Keep your shoulders down away from your ears. Looking up. Exhale to down dog. Try to do that in one smooth transition. Again, remember, you're going to be a little bit stiff. It's the morning time. Just stretch out. Bring your head down between your arms to look up to your belly button as much as you can. Push that bottom up towards the ceiling. Try to bring your heels down towards the mat. They might not reach the mat yet. That's fine. Inhale now, look forward, shift your weight forward, bring your right foot forwards to the top of the mat, foot down, low lunge. Exhale, bring your left foot forwards into forward fold. Inhale, reach up, slight back bend, let's go for number two, exhale, fold forward, this time the left foot, inhale, left foot back, low lunge, hold your breath, right foot back, plank position, Exhale, knees down, chest under asana. Inhale, slide your chest forward into cobra. Exhale to down dog. Really stretch those shoulders by bringing your head really down through your arms to look up at your belly button. In 
Inhale your left foot forwards to low lunge. Exhale your right foot forwards to forward fold. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Inhale, right foot back, low lunge. Hold your breath. Left foot back, plank. Exhale, knees down, chest down, chin down. Ashtanga Asana. Inhale, Cobra. Exhale, Down Dog. Inhale, right foot forwards, low lunge. Exhale, left foot forwards, forward fold. Inhale, reach up. Slight back bend. Looking up. Okay, let's go for number four. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, left foot back, low lunge. Hold your breath, plank. Exhale, Ashtanga Asana. Inhale, Cobra. Exhale, Down Dog. Inhale, left foot forwards, low lunge, exhale, right foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, reach up, okay, two more. Exhale, fold forward, forward fold. Let's speed it up a little bit. Inhale, right foot back, low lunge. Hold your breath blank. Exhale, Ashtanga Asana. Inhale, Cobra. Exhale, Down Dog. Inhale, right foot forwards, low lunge. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach up. Last one. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, right, left foot back, sorry. Hold your breath blank. Exhale, Ashtanga Asana. Inhale, Cobra. Exhale, Down Dog. Inhale, left foot forwards, low lunge. Exhale, 
Forward fold. Inhale, reach up, slope back, bend. And exhale, your hands back down, high position at your heart centre. Okay, hopefully that's got your heart rate up a little bit. It has mine. And you've got a good overall stretch. And we're ready to go with the main part of our session today. Our main part of asana practice, which is lower body stretch and strengthen. We will, of course, be working the upper body as well, but the focus is on the lower body. So let's just take a few moments now just to stand in Tadasana, take a few deep breaths, and prepare ourselves for asana practice. Okay, we're going to start off with a variation of forward fold called big toe posture. We're going to fold forwards, but rather than having our fingertips either side um, of our feet on the mat, we are going to hold on to our big toe like this with both hands. So you can see I'm wrapping my first two fingers around my big toe and then Use that to pull ourselves slightly further into the forward fold. So I'm going to stand facing the side so that you can see me. Stand starting off in Tadasana Mountain Pose with our feet about hip distance apart. Standing tall, standing straight. Inhale, reach up. Slight back bend. Exhale, fold forwards, reaching forwards, keeping your head in line with your arms and bending your knees as much as you need to to bring those two first two fingers around your big toe, holding on. Starting off, we're looking forwards with our chest pushed forwards and then we're going to exhale again and pull ourselves into the forward fold by pulling on our big toes. Remember that we want to keep our lower back flat, not rounded. So bend your knees as much as you need to to be able to do that. Our abdomen should be drawn in to allow us to come further into the fold. So we're breathing mainly with our chest. Let your neck relax. With each exhale, you can try to pull yourself a little bit further into the fold. Increase that stretch. Okay, now inhale, look up, release your fingers from around your toes. Now we're going to practice a posture called hand under foot posture. We're going to place our hands underneath our feet with the backs of our hands against the mats, the palms of our hands against the soles of our feet. Okay, so again, remember, bend your knees if you need to. This is more of an intense stretch than the last stretch, which is why we practice letting your neck relax, your head hang. Again, your abdomen should be drawn in. You'll notice that while we're stretching 
the backs of our legs in this position. Our quadricep muscles, our thigh muscles, we're really engaged to really contracted to help to keep us steady. You should feel an intense stretch all the way back down the backs of your legs, particularly in your hamstrings and in your glutes and your lower back. Again, on the exhalation, try to pull yourself a little bit further into the asana, into the fog. Okay, now release. Inhale, look up. Take your hands out from underneath your feet. Inhale, reach forward. Reach up. Look up. Slight back bend. And exhale your arms down to your side. Okay, just give your legs a little bit of a shake out. And we're just going to take a couple of moments to stand into Dasana, rest pose, take a few deep breaths. You might feel a little bit lightheaded to spending so long in the forward fold, so just take the time to breathe deeply. to practice chair pose, awkward chair pose. Uh, it's called awkward chair pose because it is awkward. Okay, but it's a really good strengthener for our quadricep muscles, for our thigh muscles, for our calves, for the, the muscles in our ankles and our feet. Also a very good strengthener for the lower back and uh, a good stretch for the shoulders and the chest. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to give you a couple of different options with chair pose. The full expression of the pose is when we have our arms above our head with our palms together. But that can, if your shoulders are not that flexible, that can be difficult. So the second option is to have your arms up overhead, but shoulder distance apart with your palms facing each other. The third option that we just turn to the side so that you can see is to not have your arms directly above your head, is to have your arms slightly out in front of you, about 60 degrees. Again, <clears throat> So your arms are about shoulder width apart, palms facing each other. See which is best for you, okay? So, I'll stay facing to the side so you can see me. Our feet should be about hip distance apart, maybe a little bit closer. Just so there's a small gap in between your feet. And we're going to Let's start off, I'll just show you option three, first of all, where our arms are slightly in, in front. And then we'll, we'll, we'll uh, work our way up to bringing our arms above our head or our palms together, if you can. If you can't, you can just stay in this first option. Remember, listen to your body. So we're going to, first of all, inhale, raise our arms out slightly in front of us. Shoulder width apart, palms together. I'm going to look to the space between my hands. And I'm going to exhale and bend my knees, slowly lowering my bottom as if I'm going to sit down in a chair. 
Now our arms should remain in the same position. What we don't want to see is this. We want our arms to remain in the same position. So as soon as you feel your arms starting to lower, then just don't lower your bottom anymore. Stay in that position and hold. Remember to breathe. Now, if you would like to stay in that position or take rest pose if you want to, then please do so. If you would like to see if you can try uh, with your arms directly overhead, let's give that a go. So we're going to this time raise our arms up straight, reaching our fingertips to the ceiling. But my arms are remaining apart, so about shoulder distance apart. Again, palms facing each other. I'm going to look up to the space between my palms. And again, I'm going to exhale and lower my bottom, bending my knees. Keep on looking up. And I want to keep my arms straight up as well. They shouldn't be coming forward. You'll feel much more pressure on your shoulder in this position than in the previous position. And inhale, come up, exhale, lower your arms. Just give them a bit of a shake up. So remember, stay where you want to stay. If you want to stay in the first position, stay in the first position. If you want to stay in that position, stay in that position. If you want to take a rest pose, take a rest pose. We're just going to practice the final position, which is when we actually bring our arms up overhead, bringing our palms together and we look up towards our thumbs in this position and again our, we're reaching our fingertips really up as high as we can towards the ceiling as we exhale and sink our bottom down bending our knees so I'm reaching up towards the ceiling with my fingertips and then trying to sink as low with my lower body as I can. So there's tension in my torso. Again, the arms should stay straight above my head. They should remain straight, looking up to my thumbs. Good, and inhale, straighten your knees. Exhale, lower your arms. Fabulous. Just give your arms a little bit of a shake out. A bit of a swing. Loosen off those shoulders and upper back and chest. Good. Okay, let's again just take a few moments just to stand in Tadasana. Take a few deep breaths. Okay, next we're going to practice a tiptoe squat. Again, I'm going to turn to the side so that you can see the position of my body more clearly. This is really good for strengthening your quadricep muscles, your thigh muscles. What we're going to do is we're going to bring our arms up out in front of us at about shoulder level with our palms facing down to the floor. Now come up onto your tiptoes. Have I got something in my eye? Oh, there we go. And now we're going to slowly lower ourselves, still on our tiptoes, into a squatting position. Notice that I'm keeping my back upright, my back straight. And hold. 
looking in front of you. Oh, feel those thigh muscles working in. And then inhale, straighten back up. Let's just try that once more. Exhale, squat. Keeping that back straight, keeping your arms out in front of you. And hold. And inhale up. Whew. Okay, good. Give your legs a little bit of a shake out. Okay, what are we going to do next? Let's practice pyramid pose next. <clears throat> We're going to stand with our right foot forwards and our left foot back. Now our right foot is just facing directly forwards, our left foot is facing slightly out to help to keep us stable. My hips are facing forwards and what we're going to do is we're going to fold forwards over the front leg, over our right leg. So the same as we did with the forward fold earlier, we're going to inhale, bring our arms up, reach up, and fold forwards, reaching forwards, looking forwards, trying to keep our head initially in line with our arms, and then bringing our fingertips to the mat either side of our front foot or right foot, and trying to bring our nose towards our shin. Again, we should be really engaging our thigh muscles to hold a steady. This is a really intense stretch down the back of my right leg. Remember to breathe slowly. Okay, and we're coming up. So look forward, push your chest forward, reach up. So reach forward and then reach up. And then exhale, your arms down. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So step your left foot forwards, your right foot back. Again, just check your foot positioning. Check the position of your hips. They should be facing forwards. You should really feel that you're already engaging your thigh muscles to really hold you steady. Make sure that you do feel stable before you attempt to come in to triangle pose. Okay, when we're ready, inhale, reaching up. Exhale, reaching forwards, forwards, and then bringing our hands down to either side of our left foot. Trying to bring your nose, your forehead down towards your shin. This is a really intense stretch. Okay, we're going to get ready to come up now, so look forwards, push your chest forwards, engage your thigh muscles, 
Really engage them, so hold you steady. Inhale, reach forward, reach up, and exhale. Your arms down. Woohoo! Fabulous. You should feel really stretched now down the backs of your legs. Let's just take again a couple of moments to stand and take some deep breaths. Okay, next we're going to practice warrior two pose, which is an excellent strengthener for your um, leg muscles. Good stretch for your hips, also for your upper back and chest and shoulders. So if you're on a mat, come to face the side of your mat. And Bring your feet apart about four to five feet, depending on the flexibility of your hips. You could probably bring them further apart than you think, but just be mindful of your body. So you should feel a decent stretch here when you do this in your, in your groin. Your toes should be ever so slightly turned in, ever so slightly pigeon-toed. I can really feel already that my quadricep muscles are really engaging to hold me steady. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my right foot out to face the top of my mat. So that it's facing 90 degrees away from my left foot. My heel of my right foot should be roughly in line with the arch of my left foot. Now I'm going to bend my right knee so that it comes over my ankle. I want to avoid my knee tracking in like this. If your knee is coming in like this, you probably aren't trying to keep your feet too far apart. Okay, so you can bring your feet slightly closer together. If, however, you find that your, your right knee is going over your right ankle, so it's more like in line with your toes, then your feet are too close together. Bring your back foot back a little bit you can come deeper into the stretch. Your hips should still be facing sideways. Now we're going to inhale our arms up to shoulder level. Reach our fingertips out as much as we can in both directions. So imagine that someone's pulling you by your right fingertips, someone's pulling you by your left fingertips. So they're pulling your chest and your upper back apart. Look towards your right fingertips and hold. Breathe slowly and deeply. Really feel those leg muscles working. Now we're going to change foot positioning. So now we're going to turn our right foot back to face the side of the mat. Toes is ever so slightly turned in. Our left foot to face the top of the mat. 90 degree angle away from our right foot. Heel of your left foot roughly in line with the arch of your right foot. Bend your left knee again. Checking the position of your knee, making sure it's above your ankle, making sure your hips are still facing sideways. Inhale your arms up to shoulder level. Reach out as much as you can in both directions and look towards your left fingertips.
arms down, inhale, straighten your left knee, turn your left foot back to face the side of the mat. <clears throat> we're going to keep in this position, we're going to practice triangle pose, then we will take another rest pose. So again, starting position is that our both feet are facing the side of the mat, toes ever so slightly turned in. And now again, same as with warrior two, we're going to turn our right foot out to face the top of the mat or 90 degrees away from your left foot. This time we're keeping this leg straight, we're not bending it. Really, you'll notice that my thigh muscle here is really engaged to protect my knee. Uh, toes are spread so that they're gripping the floor. I've got a good stable base with my right foot and with my left foot here. Now I'm going to inhale my arms up to shoulder level. And I'm going to exhale, reach right out to the right side and then bring my right hand down, my left hand up, so I'm keeping my arms in line with one another. Now, my fingertips may not come all the way down to the floor, I may just be here, okay, I may just have my uh, fingertips resting a little bit further up my shin here. The important thing is that we don't lean forwards. It's a lateral bend, a side bend. So what I see a lot of the time is because they see that the final position of triangle is that fingertips are coming down to the floor, is that I see people bending forwards to try to bring their fingertips down to the floor. What we want to pay attention to is the stretch that we're feeling. If I bring my, if I lean forward like that, I lose all that stretch down my down my side. That's where we should feel a really intense stretch all the way down the side of the body and in the hip. So our hip should still be open. This left corner of my pelvis here should be, you can imagine that should be pointing up to the ceiling. I'm really feeling that intense stretch all the way down my side. And of course here, really feeling my leg muscles engage, really good leg strengthening exercise, or asana, posture. And inhale, coming back up again. Okay, let's practice the same thing on the other side. <clears throat> so again, right now, starting off with both feet facing the side of the mat, toes ever so slightly turned in. Now turning your left foot out to face the top of your mat, 90 degrees away from your right foot. Inhale your arms up to shoulder level, exhale, reach out to the left, now bring your left fingertips down, your right fingertips up, so your arms are in line with each other, remember don't bend forward, it's a side bend, a lateral bend, pay attention to the stretch that you feel all the way down your right side of your right hip, Hold steady. Okay, inhaling, coming up. Really well done. I can't see you, but I'm sure you that you were doing it brilliantly. Okay, so let's again just take a moment just shake our legs out. 
and stand in mountain pose. Close your eyes, take some deep, deep breaths. Okay, we're coming towards the end of our asana practice, close to time for relaxation and meditation. Um, but we've got time to, to do some a little bit more. So we're going to come down to the mat now. And we're going to try to do so by coming into a low squat into garland pose. So bring your feet about 60 centimeters apart with your toes pointing slightly out. We're going to bring our hands into prayer position, our heart center. Push the heels of your hands down to get a good stretch in the wrist. And we're going to bend our knees and slowly lower ourselves down, lower bottom down towards the floor. You have to bend a little bit forward at this stage probably to keep your balance and come into garland pose. In garland pose we have our elbows on the insides of our knees and we're using our elbows just to push our knees out slightly to the side. Our hands are still in prayer position at our heart centre. We're trying to keep a straight back, so pushing our chest a little bit forwards, looking forwards. Okay, brilliant. All right, let's now come all the way down to the mat. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to practice a stretch for the outside of our hip. Quite often people are, are fairly flexible in their hip flexors and, and their, their adductor muscles here in, in, the, in their leg, um, inside of their leg but they have tight muscles up here across the outside of the hip. So we're going to just to work on releasing uh, those now. What we're going to do, turn to the side so you can see me, is I'm sitting with my knee bent and my heel in as close as I can get it to my bottom with my foot flat on the floor. Now I'm going to lean back on my uh, fingers, on my hands, my fingertips, and I'm going to lean back enough to be able to just lift my bottom up off the floor and cross my right leg, my right ankle over my right thigh just above the knee. And now I'm going to slowly lower my bottom back down to the mat again. I really feel an intense stretch there across the outside of my right hip. I can now just try to walk my hands in a little bit closer to my bottom, keeping my bottom on the floor. That will increase that stretch. It's a really intense stretch, okay? So you might be much more back here. That's fine. Pay attention to your body, how your body feels. Okay, and release. Now we're going to practice the same thing 
on the other side. Okay, so now with your other foot, bringing that heel in as close as you can to, let me turn around, as close as you can to your bottom, keeping your foot flat on the floor. Again, lean back on your hands, lift your bottom up off of the floor, cross your left ankle over your right thigh just above the knee, lower your bottom back down to the floor again, and try to walk your hands in as close as you can without your bottom coming off the floor. Notice if there's any imbalances between the sides of your body, if one hip is much stiffer than the other hip, that's quite common. Very common, in fact. Good, and release. Now let's just do a time check. Okay, we're coming towards the end of the session. Let's just do one more asana. Let's uh, finish up with bridge pose. So we're going to come and lay on our backs. Bring your heels in nice and close to your bottom, about the width of the mat if you have one. If you don't have a mat, that's so that your heels are just slightly out from uh, your bottom, on the outside of your bottom. Arms down by your side, palms facing down into the floor. If you can, it's good that you're able to reach <coughs> your heels with your fingertips, or with your, with your hands if you can even hold on to your heels, that's good. Okay, now we're going to inhale, push our hips up towards the ceiling, coming up onto our shoulders, walking our shoulder blades together, bring our hands together behind our back, interlocking our fingers, really push your hips up as high as you can towards the ceiling, and hold. Remember to breathe. Okay. Your hands, bring your shoulder blades back apart again and slowly lower your spine back down to the floor until your bottom reaches the floor. Good. Okay, well done, guys. Um, now it's time for all important savasana for corpse pose relaxation at the end of our session. Savasana is really important, it helps to integrate the effects of our practice. If you just skip straight out of asana practice onto your everyday life, you won't get that same feeling or calmness that you have if you practice Savasana at the end of your session. So we're actually going to have just under 10 minutes of asana. So if you want to um, put any socks on, jumpers on, blankets over you to, to make sure that you're warm, you don't want to be cold, then you can't relax. Come to lay on your back with your feet slightly apart, your two feet apart, just let your toes hang out, your arms should be out just slightly out away from your side with your palms facing up towards the ceiling. Close your eyes. 
begin by breathing slowly and deeply. Maybe you shift your position to make sure that you're comfortable. Just do a scan of your body, make sure that you're not holding tension anywhere in your body, completely relax. So notice every part of your body that's in contact with the floor. Feel the floor supporting you. Relax into the floor. Also make sure that you relax your face, relax your jaw, relax your tongue, relax your eyes. Completely let go.
attention back to the room, back to your body. Fingers and your toes. Reach your arms up overhead, bring your legs together and stretch, pointing your toes, trying to make your body as long as possible. And then relax your arms, bend your knees, keeping your eyes closed, roll to the side. Remain there for a few moments. Now slowly, without disturbing your relaxed state of mind, push yourself up to a seated position, a comfortable seated position. So, because we're going to spend now just under 10 minutes in meditation. So if you would like to sit on the cushion, then Please do so. If you would like to sit with your legs crossed, sit with your legs crossed. If you want to sit with your legs out in front of you, then do so. However you feel comfortable. But do try to sit with a straight back. This helps to stop your attention from wandering quite so much. And just... Either close your eyes or semi-close your eyes and just cast your gaze with a soft focus down at the floor in front of you, whichever you prefer. And focus on your breath. Your natural breath. Notice the sensation of inhaling and exhaling. And every time your mind starts to wander, which it will, that's what it does, just let that thought go and return your attention to your breath.
Okay, now I'm going to close our session this morning by chanting OM three times, followed by closing mantra of Asatoma and OM Shanti. Please, I would love if you join me with the OM chanting and the OM Shanti. You probably don't know the words, but Asatoma. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining today and practicing with me. I hope that you have a fabulous day today. I will be back tomorrow uh, morning with Wake Up Yoga at uh, 8.30 GMT plus one. And every weekday there is Wake Up Yoga at the same time. I will be back with another Hatha Yoga um, next week, same time, so Wednesday at 9.30 GMT plus one. Okay guys, I hope that you have a lovely day and I hope that you uh, enjoy the rest of the week. Mwah! Love to all, take care of yourselves. Love you Sharon, miss you too, bye. <laughs>